In this video, we look at how to create a perfect DevOps resume. Having a good resume with right keywords and proper structure has helped me land my first internship, my full-time job, and even freelancing contracts at some very good startups. So in this video, I will share my resume along with some valuable tips and some helpful tools to help you create your DevOps resume. Now let me start with showing you two different resumes to help you understand how you can create your DevOps resume if you're a fresher or even if you are an experienced DevOps engineer. So here is the first resume. Notice how much information is present in this resume. So we have the name of the candidate, designation, a quick summary, contact information, languages that the candidate can speak, along with certifications, some AWS and DevOps projects, work experience from previous organizations, skills that the candidates have, education and some more projects here. So this is our first resume. This is our second resume, which is a single page resume. And here is the name of the candidate, designation, a quick summary, contact information. And these are all clickable links along with work experience from previous organization, personal projects, education, skills, achievements, certificates, language, and interest. Now answer me this in the comment section, which one of these resumes do you think is more attractive to the recruiters or which of these resumes have more chances of getting selected? Let me know in the comment section. After you have commented your favorite DevOps resume in the comment section. Now let's try to look at these resumes one by one and understand what problems are there and what can we solve to create a perfect DevOps resume. The first thing in my mind when I look at this resume is no proper spacing and too much text. So the first step when creating your DevOps resume is to make sure that you limit your resume in either one page or maximum two pages, not more than that. And also avoid adding unnecessary stuff. Whenever you put details, make sure it is in proper structure, it looks good and not just bombarded with information. So whenever you create your DevOps resume, make sure you have proper spacing, you are using right fonts so that your resume looks nice. Now the first thing in the resume is going to be the candidate name. Always make sure you are using your full name. Try avoiding using your nicknames that can create an unprofessional impact. Here the candidate has a full name uh, and also has a bigger font size compared to other text in the resume, which is good. Next, there's also a professional title or a designation, which is AWS Certified Solutions Architect Professional, which is good. Adding a professional title or a designation can provide you more context of your expertise. So you should always add that, but there's no proper spacing and the font has also been changed. So this is something you, look, you should be looking into. Next, there's a summary. Uh, you should always add a summary for yourself in your resume. That should highlight your abilities, your years of experience. If you are an experienced person, if you are a fresher, you can highlight how you can learn things faster and stuff like that. In here, it says transitioning cloud consultant proficient in AWS and Kubernetes. CKAD is not required because it's already mentioned in the certification. Building CI-CD pipelines and mi deploying microservices following GitOps principle is okay. 16 years of work experience with Alliance Group, the largest insurance company in Europe as a leader of big sales. I don't think this is required because this is not related to the DevOps engineer role. But So try to avoid anything that is extra. You could rather a good summary could be something uh, like certified DevOps engineer with five years of experience in cloud deployment and management, prof proficient in using DevOps tools like Terraform, Kubernetes, whatever is required according to the job description. Uh, next thing, this resume also has contact information, but there are no social media links like LinkedIn or GitHub. So always try to add social media links which are clickable. So whenever you click on it, uh, they should lead you to your, your LinkedIn profile or your GitHub profile. And also add your contact information because this is the only way recruiters can contact you if you have been selected for the role. So always make sure to add your contact information and social media links, uh, which should be clickable. This is not so good because there's no spacing and even the number is not in correct format. So make sure you add your contact information and social media links. Next, I, next I see certifications at the very first of the resume. You might be confused on what things should you add at the first of your resume. Uh, to help you clear it out, let's say you are a fresher. For a fresher, you should be adding your certifications. If you have any certification or if you have any good projects, add them first. If you don't have any of that, then add your education, uh, which is the most important part if you are a fresher. But if you are an experienced person with, let's say, three to four years of experience, always add your work experience as the first thing in your resume because that is more important than the recruiters are concerned about that more if you are an experienced person. So if you are an experienced person, put your work experience first then your education, then your certifications and projects if you have. So this is not in correct format as 
the person has some experience, they should be putting their experience first and then putting certifications or projects. Now these certifications are okay because they are all clickable and you can verify them by clicking on these links. So I think this is okay. Uh, ne next is work experience. Whenever you add summary or bullet point, always make sure you are adding metrics or what impact you made when working at this particular company. So this job summary is not up to the point. A good example would be something like in my resume, I've included job summary, which has keywords like provisioned, created, developed, streamlined. So all these keywords will help you track and also select your resume in the ATS uh, systems. So always make sure to add summary or bullet points for your job experiences in a way where you showcase what you have done and how the changes have impacted in the DevOps lifecycle. So something like adding metrics like this. So I created an automated CICD pipelines for code deployment using Jenkins or GitLab resulting in elimination of 70% of manual work. But whenever you add summaries or whenever you add this job description, always make sure you have experiences and you have answers whenever you get questions on these things. So this is what uh, you need to change if you have a resume like this. Along with this, always add links for projects you have to show that you have actually done it. So let's say you are adding a project, always try to add links to it. Something like, I have created a link to my GitHub repository showcasing that I did this project. You can either create a link for your projects uh, through GitHub or maybe through LinkedIn if you have posted a project on LinkedIn. Second thing is to have a good summary about the project and not just add a paragraph like this here. Having two good projects is better than having 10 baseless projects. That is what recruiters are looking for. Yes. So these are some of the changes I would suggest uh, making if you have a resume like this. Along with this, let's say you have multiple job experiences or uh, you have worked in past five companies, you don't need to add all of them if they are not directly related to the job. For example, here, uh, this person has mentioned something about intraday trading, which is not required and the recruiter will have no interest uh, be because this is not related to the DevOps engineer role. So try avoiding things which is not related. I would say at least uh, three previous experiences would be good to add, not more than that if it is not related to your job. Now that we have completed reviewing this resume to understand what problems does it have, let's have a look at my resume. And this resume is a bit old one, but it's still very good and you can also refer it to create your resume. This resume has helped me got so many different freelancing tasks. Uh, so I think you can refer to this, but I will also provide you with more DevOps resume samples in the description. Uh, so if you want me to share that, do let me know. Along with that, I will also, I will also show you how you can use ChatGPT to create job descriptions like this and also some websites that will help you provide templates to create a resume like this. I created this with an online website and you can also do the same. So, so when creating a resume, always make sure to have the name on the top of your resume. It could be in center, right or left. Uh, try to avoid adding your graphics or photographs because uh, ATS system does not recognize photographs. So you can optionally remove them. I do also have a professional title here and a short summary about me. Along with that, I also have my social media links and contact information. So if I click on this, it will open up my LinkedIn. I could also add a uh, GitHub on my YouTube link if I want to. Uh, but this is the necessary ones to have your email ID, to have phone number, your location and your uh, LinkedIn profile. Along with this, you can also add your achievements. If you have posted a blog or maybe created a video, something like that. Next, as I said, the most important thing should be put at the first of your resume. As I had some experience, I have added that here. And in this, I've added some job description that explains what I did in that particular role. So I provisioned cloud infrastructure using Terraform and Ansible, implemented Argo CD for automated Kubernetes deployment, improving deployment consistency and reducing deployment time. So reading this summary is better and the interviewer is going to understand that this person has created infrastructure using Terraform and Ansible. And I've also experienced using Argo CD with Kubernetes. So this is how you should be creating it. Now, if you want to create summaries like this, I can provide you with a chat GPT prompt. Let me show you how you can create summaries like this. So I'm going to open up chat GPT, which is an AI tool by OpenAI, and you can use that for your dev daily use cases. So this is the prompt here. I'm going to ask chat GPT to act as a resume builder to help me create my DevOps resume and generate a job description snippet by providing an example like this. So I'm going to now ask it to do that and it will provide me with different uh, different job summaries like this. So I can add all of this, which includes some metrics along with different keywords like orchestrated, automated, implemented, and also includes 
uh, different tools like Kubernetes here, Docker, Terraform, and other tools. So you can try to use them or also change them according to your job description. But here is the prompt. Uh, if you want, let me know in the comment section and I will share it to you in the description. So this is how I use AI to help me do stuff and also create resumes like this. Along with this, there are many different websites like Canva, Nova Resume, Google Docs that can provide you with formats. You can start creating resumes rather than editing it in your word format. Let me show you how you can create your resume in Canva. So Canva is a website where it, which I use often uh, to do a lot of stuff. This is used as a design tool and you can create resumes by searching resume here. So let's search for resume and you will find templates that you can start using for creating your resume. Most of these things are paid, but you can try using all the free ones. So these are all the free ones, I guess. Uh, and you can start using it. So let's say you want to create a resume using this template. Just click on it. Uh, you can make this bigger by using this and then you start filling up your detail. So this is how easy it is to create resume using Canva. A similar tool is Nova Resume, which is how I created my this resume. So I have uh, an account created with Nova Resume and you can create one page resume for free. Uh, you can see this is the resume I created and you can go ahead and download it. You also get fonts and this is not a sponsored uh, video. So don't worry about uh, getting charged. You can use this if you like or else you can use Canva. Uh, sim similar to this is Google Docs. In Google Docs, you also get templates that you can start using as well. So in Google Docs, you can see resume uh, templates are here. And if you click on it, you can get resume for Serif, Corel, uh, different dif different templates for resume. The good one is this. And all you need to do is to put your information and you can start using it. These are some of the tools uh, that I use personally. There are also other tools uh, which can help you track ATS and also find how good is your resume. Uh, so if you want me to create a video on that, or if you want more information, or if you want me to review your resume, do let me know in the comment section. So this is the end of our DevOps resume video. I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, any doubt, feel free to let me know in the comment section and also comment DevOps resume. If you want me to share the document which has templates to create different DevOps resume for freshers and experienced people. Like this video, subscribe to CloudCham. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.